G'day ZGD here, yesterday day one of season three of Diablo 3 started and I started along with it. Coming back to the game after a couple months break, I played a little bit in the PTR but I hadn't seen too much of the changes first hand yet so I thought in this video I'll give you guys my first impressions of uh, patch 2.2 and season three after sort of completing the leveling process and just getting started on gearing up my character. The leveling process is, as much as it's always been, pretty much the same thing. You uh, select a few uh, efficient bounties and run them over and over, and uh, that's generally like one of the faster, legit ways of leveling up. So I did that. I leveled up to about uh, I leveled up to about 70 in about seven and a half hours, maybe, which is a bit slower than what some people do. Some people can do like five to six hours, I believe. So although the leveling process is pretty much what it's always been, I did get a chance to notice some of the new changes, and my impressions so far are pretty positive of these new changes. One of the changes you're seeing in the background now, and that is the addition of these new exploration bounties. So I started off by doing kind of just this list of bounties that were said to be really efficient, but I started working in some of these exploration bounties to sort of try them out, have a bit of a go with them, see what, the, see what they're all about. And uh, as long as they were in sort of good zones with good mob density, they were often pretty good to do and I started working them into my rotation of bounties as well which added a nice bit of extra diversity to the leveling process. And as far as bounties go, they're also a nice interesting addition too. They see you explore uh, zones that you probably weren't exploring before so much and they also see you interact with kind of some nice thematic elements. I mean, they're nothing mind-blowing, but things like running through, uh, you know, running through and activating catapults or freeing prisoners or killing hordes of demons uh, that spawn out of these kind of like demon canister things and things like that, uh, they're a nice extra addition and they're all themed to the zones and they all make sense within the zone they're, they're in as well. So that was a nice little addition and helped increase sort of the variety in my gameplay while leveling and I'll be able to experience those a bit more once I start running bounties a bit more at endgame now as well. The other thing that I noticed was that significantly more legendaries have either more impressive or more, they actually have legendary affixes. So they have gone back and added a lot of legendary affixes to various items that I found throughout the leveling process and other ones that I found that already had legendary affixes became much more notable, like they were much more powerful, they're much more noticeable. So that was pretty nice and that's the sort of thing that I think is really fun when you're leveling in Diablo 3. You often find legendaries that make a big difference to you in terms of leveling and change the way you play your character as you're leveling as well. They make you change skills and change your playstyle a little bit to take advantage of those bonuses. One good example, if I switch over here, is I found a Dead Man's Legacy at level 69, so just before I hit 70, and uh, this was always a classic stat stick quiver. I mean, it was it was good just because it could roll high stats, and uh, it never had a legendary affix. So it's finally had a legendary affix added to it now. Multi shot hits enemies below 56% health twice, and I believe that 56 can change between 50 and 60. So if you can get that up to uh, you know below 60% health, you can, it's gonna it's gonna activate a little bit earlier, which is nice. But uh, this essentially allows you to double tap enemies that are, you know, are getting to low health. And this uh, works so powerfully with multi-shot. And uh, this has obviously, you know, been added to the game in mind of the new multi-shot set that Demon Hunters have access to as well. But even while leveling and even without the multi-shot set, just rocking multi-shot regularly, uh, I've found this to be very effective. I started using Ambush with it. You deal 40% additional damage to enemies above 75 health. So what happens is I hit them once with a multi-shot when they're above 75 health, so the first shot, and that takes them down to about half health because of the additional damage there. And then the second hit is a double tap and finishes them off very quickly. So these sort of things have a nice little synergy together and that's sort of, again, it was something that made me think about, oh, what can I what can I combo with this to make it powerful? So I like the addition of that and uh, a few of the other legendaries I found as, as I was going were pretty good, pretty good as well. I got this one ring that spawned kind of like a, a little, a, one of those little baneling creatures from Keep Depths and uh, the thing did huge damage. Basically, whenever it spawned, it would one-shot the nearest mob to me, so this little thing would run out. I'd hear a little giggle, and then I'd just see it explode and loot pop out. So that was a pretty nice one for leveling as well. I also found this cool new legendary as well, Convention of Elements. I've heard people talking about this a little bit, so when it dropped for me at 67, I was like, whoa, and I looked at the actual rolls, and I was like, I think I may have just found my endgame ring, even though it's only level 67, because this thing is pretty beastly. It, uh, it it started roll it you know rolled with main stat crit damage and crit chance so it should scale pretty well and the rolls you know the rolls are okay and then uh, on top of that it's got that legendary affix gain this one is 155 percent so this one's really low rolled I don't know if I can re-roll that or not I'll have to check later but uh, it ranges between 150 and 200 percent 
And what it does is it gives you a bonus to that element while the effect is up, and that effect rotates through the elements available to your class, which for my class that's four different elements, and uh, for the four seconds it gives you that bonus to that element. So you'll see this swirling effect around me, which is really cool by the way. It's now in physical, the stone equals physical, and you can see the buff just here. It's now onto cold, and it'll keep, it'll keep rotating through systematically each of these elements. So that means, you know, one-fourth of the time you have 155 or 200% increased damage for that element. You can average that out to see how much damage that's giving you, and if you know if you get 200% roll and it's four elements, then you know you're getting 50% increased damage to all elements, of, you know, on average, essentially. So it's a it's a pretty powerful seeming item, and uh, I I like the playstyle that it encourages as well. You sort of you sort of come to get in the rhythm in the back of your mind of what element you're in and because it cycles through systematically each time it's the same cycle so you know that once your fire buff comes up because I'm using fire skills then I can go absolutely ham unleash all of my you know unleash all of my cooldowns unleash all of my damage dealing dump all my hatred and in that four seconds just absolutely destroy everything and then when it's on elements that are not your main element you can kind of play a little bit more defensively build up your resources move around group up enemies and stuff like that so I really like this one this was an, a nice sort of addition I don't know when this was added to the game as I said, I haven't played for a couple months. It might be in this patch or it might have been in a, an earlier patch, but this was a nice find for me. So overall, my leveling experience was pretty fun. I found a few cool legendaries along the way and uh, doing a, you know, a small variety of bounties uh, for about six to seven hours wasn't wasn't too repetitive. It was a pretty, a pretty in enjoyable, nothing particularly crazy, but a pretty enjoyable leveling process overall. Uh, the highlights kind of were finding a few of those kind of more impressive legendaries and rolling my reduced level requirements bow that I used as well. So when I was sub 40, in, my, in my 40s somewhere, I, uh, I, I crafted a level 60 bow and uh, managed to get a mystic craft on the secondary affix to get reduced level requirement. So this is one here, but this is not the one that I used. And I managed to get like 16 reduced level requirement or something like that. So I was able to equip a level 60 bow way many levels before I was supposed to. And that made me just start one-shotting everything. So that was a pretty exciting moment as well. But yeah, overall, I enjoyed the leveling process. You know, it's still the same sort of thing if you've done this sort of bounty style leveling before, but it was good fun, and I like that you can jump straight into adventure mode now as well. My final takeaway is that it seems like, and I'm not 100% I'm not sure because I don't remember reading any changes about this specifically, but it seems like people are gearing up faster. This is the experience I've had myself so far. I've, I've literally only just started, and before I even reached Endgame, I already had a few items that are going to carry me into higher Torment difficulties, like this Dead Man's Legacy, even though it's 69, this thing will go pretty good. I can still re-roll the elemental arrow on that to get to get what I want to get, but this, is, this thing is pretty legit. I got a Mage Fist, and I mean... I can reroll that attack speed into crit chance or crit multi, and that's pretty legit. 20% more fire damage. I mean, and then I got this thing as well. These I've all found all of these before max level. I don't know. Maybe I got really lucky. <laughs> Let me know, guys. Let me know in the comments if I got really lucky. But uh, it seems like uh, it seems like I'm having a really easy time gearing up. And I tuned into a few different streams. I tuned into the Yugi stream, and uh, I know those guys have been playing for a little bit longer because they're on EU. But they, those guys are full T6 gear already in hardcore. Like it seems like the gearing up, that initial gearing up, is uh, much faster now. So I'm not sure what changed there, but maybe everyone's just getting lucky, or maybe the people I've seen have gotten really lucky. Uh, I, so I certainly feel like I've gotten lucky. It's been fun, but uh, it probably it probably lends itself to my impressions that. For me now, the game is pretty short-lived because that gearing up is uh, is over pretty quickly. Like within a week or something, you have most of the gear you want to get, and then it's mostly grinding for higher or better rolled ancient legendaries and things like that. Anyway, I'm curious to know your guys' impressions. If you've been playing season three, what have you thought about it so far? And uh, have I been particularly lucky with my drops so far? I don't know. We'll see, and we'll see if I have been lucky whether that trend continues. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.